Ta-da! This is all the equipment I had with me during my Baltic Sea tour. It was about 500 kilometers, three days bikepacking. I had everything I needed with me and today I'm gonna just sum up uh, which, what stuff was good, what stuff was not that great maybe. Uh, but it was a great way to make the, the base miles for somebody who's training so much and doesn't have time for touring. It was a great fun. Let's just start with the basic thing, which is the bicycle. I did already review the Merida Salix for it's, it's a good bike, but just overall, the bike for bikepacking, the gravel bike for that, can be a really good uh, thing because it is fast, can be comfortable if you have uh, the right uh, geometry. Uh, it is also strong enough, and I liked it so much. One thing I didn't need on the bike uh, I have is the components. All Tigra components is just too high. Hydraulic disc brakes, very good because uh, if you have a lot of weight on your bike and you're riding through the mountains, it's, it's great. But Altigra, I wouldn't need Altigra. I think 105 would be awesome because it's 11 speed at the rear, but Tiagra would be just great. But one thing, if you're gonna be bikepacking through the mountains, triple crank set uh, would be the best option. Uh, the uh, bike manufacturers always say that the real bike packing people, riders, always uh, run out of the gears. So triple crank set if, you, if you're really into it. I'm gonna do like 200, 300, 500, up to 1000 kilometers uh, trips just for my base miles, for my training actually and then a 2x11, 2x10 drivetrain would be just enough. So high components on such a bike is not important for me because 600 grams difference for me doesn't matter. If you, if you really travel through the world, maybe throughout the world, maybe uh, you, you need lighter bike. For me, alloy frame with a full carbon compliant fork and let's say 105 or SRAM, what Apex uh, components or Campy, even potenza, even even lower, would be just great. Another thing is the bubble cages mounts. Uh, I got three, one, two, three, and what I did was, it was smart. It was the first time I I did such a bikepacking tour, but it was. It was going so smoothly. So two uh, bottles here on the frame, uh, one with water, plain water, we need to drink water, guys. And in the other, it was like electrolytes. And here on the third one, just under the frame, I had the electrolytes powder. So when I would just stop and find the store, I would buy one and a half liter uh, bottle. Uh, I would just, um, a tank those two and put a powder from this one into one of those bottles. Remember, finding the stores in the remote places and then finding different stuff in your in your bags can take a lot of time. If you want to go long miles, it's good to be prepared. So powder in this one, water, electrolytes uh, in those two. It was great. So three three bottles uh, on the bike was awesome. Now the bottle cages. These are the tags serious I believe. Uh, light, which is not the most important thing, but they hold on the bottle very very well. So you're not gonna lose your bottle. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm really loving this one. Yes, it will wear down some logos from your uh, bottles, especially if, if it's a muddy day, a rainy day. But this is how I want to have my, uh, my bottles mounted, just securely. The next thing is the shoes. I had been using the Shimano Enduro shoes. These are the ME7. The first reason I went for these ones uh, for my trip was how comfortable they feel. No numbness uh, on, on my feet, uh, very comfy. I did love uh, having those uh, shoes on. So ME7 are really comfortable shoes. Reason number two, uh, on the bikepacking tours you need to walk a lot so of course the mountain bikes uh, specific pedals clippers pedals in my case uh, and this sole is really really good for for walking michelin uh, very good rubber so it works well and also as for, for the ventilation it just worked fine uh, the temperatures i was i was riding in was about between 10 and 20 uh, degrees celsius uh, 
feeling feeling great in this. So the ventilation was okay. Uh, for walking, great. Comfort, great. But one really bad thing about this is that this little thing um, is just wearing off very quickly. It, t it tears down uh, quickly. It, it has to be repaired. Now the bicycle lights. I have so many things to, to talk about. Uh, the first one I've been using was the Mactronic, uh, Mactronic Red Line. Uh, and I would use this mode, so the most economic one. And then the other one was the Bontrager Flare R City. My favorite by far because um, it's, it's really strong during the day. It's also got the light sensor so uh, it will go uh, with less power during the, the night. When I saw that one would run out of the juice, then I would use the other one uh, and so the, uh, the batteries would be used uh, to the full. But I'm not sure whether any of this really ran out of the juice during those three days uh, trip. I don't think so. Uh, but I used the Bontrager uh, Flare R during the day also on the roads. Talking about the energy, uh, these are the power banks uh, I've been using. This is the mi.com, is it Xiaomi? Uh, 10,000 milliamps, really good one, a small one, very, very, very well working. I've never uh, ran out of juice during one day trip. But the real thing for that trip, for that three days trip, was this one. I wasn't sure whether I will get some energy on the way. This is also the Xiaomi, I think, but different logo. Uh, this one is 15,000 uh, milliamps. It is way heavier than this one, much heavier. Uh, and I checked it uh, very, very precisely for you. I can, I can charge my LG G6 phone from 15 to 100% of the battery four times plus like 10 12%. So uh, I would always wait until 15% uh, of the energy and then charge uh, to the full four times and then from 15 to 25. Very good power bank, very good, working very, very well. The phone holder, I would never believe that this kind of design will work for uh, holding the phone, even on the mountain bike. I've been using this one, this one for almost a year now, I think since December last year that was. Uh, the link is in the description. There is no springs, no rubber between the, the phone and, and the holder. You just have this one um, screw here and it works it never failed not even once so this is very good holder maybe one disadvantage of it is that it stands out pretty much from your uh, handlebars so it's it's pretty high so not not very slim but otherwise it will work for many different phones easy for me great let's turn into the bike packing equipment specifically uh, these are the uh, bags uh, for the back of your bike and that's the thing i would not recommend it is not high quality it is ropes on rope ropes ropes bone uh, brand it's not high quality you can see that the zipper may just fail working very very soon uh, it's made of uh, some material which should be water resistant, but the way it's been it's been put together doesn't look very well. Uh, I mean, as for the for the uh, luggage space, it was just enough for me. I didn't I didn't need more, uh, but it doesn't look good. Uh, I don't think I think the zipper will, will would fail uh, as the first one on it, and so that's the thing I would not recommend. As for the racks, I cannot recommend or not recommend because it is like non-brand racks. Uh, rack. I just bought it uh, somewhere in the in the store, in the bike store, for twenty dollars or so. It's just been working. We had to do some additional uh, mounting for my Silex uh, because the alloy Silex is not that well made at the rear for the racks as the carbon one because there we had to work. Uh, over the uh, around the the weld but it's been working great you don't have to spend much money for this now these lowriders I, I I did love it uh, so these come uh, as the accessories uh, from Merida you mount those uh, on the fork and I was surprised how much stuff you can put into it 
Uh, first off, I was just folding down all the stuff nicely, but then I discovered it's better not to do it, just push it uh, all together. And since these were just uh, bike jerseys and bike beep beep shorts, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it looked okay when I was wearing it. Uh, it is waterproof. I was I was still using the uh, some plastic bags inside, but I don't think it was uh, it was um, necessary because this is really well made. I'm loving this stuff. This I had on my handlebars. Uh, this bag, should we call it? Uh, is mounted on the handlebars and it's it, it's been great. Uh, no rattling, no problems, uh, and the mattress were he, was here inside. Two advantages of this kind of uh, bag. First off, it will lean against uh, your cables. So um, depending on how your cables are routed on your bike, it can change a little bit your shifting. Uh, so you might need some adjustment after putting this uh, on the bike if it's pretty heavy. This one is quite heavy. And second thing, uh, it can make some scratches on your uh, head tube. Even though I put there some some tape, the tape was just too thin and I did scratch my, my, um, my bike a little bit. So these are two advantages. Otherwise, it is just the additional free space uh, for some stuff. Uh, this bag comes with the with the bag just as uh, these uh, lowriders uh, from from Merida, but I didn't use it. I just put the mattress here inside. Worked well. And the mattress is genius. It has the pump built in, uh, and I did like it so much. You just pump it with your feet. It takes uh, very little time. It is so comfy. I was thinking whether it's not too thin for my weight. Uh, maybe when I was you know changing position on the elbows I thinking will this be comfortable it is comfortable I do confirm that it holds the air uh, very very simple design this kind of sponge inside uh, and it makes the the air go just uh, one direction in into the uh, the mattress it's, it's great I've been loving this one uh, and I will be using it on my other trips the tent. Uh, I had two-person tent with the weight of 2.6 kilograms. And here is my tip for you guys. If you want to keep your bike inside the tent, this two-person tent will be awesome because I think most of the bikes will, will fit in. I think 29er would fit also uh, into this one. I just removed one wheel and the bike was uh, with me inside. So no rain, no problems. You have it, you see it, no problem. If you can somehow uh, secure it to the tent outside of the tent then one person tent would be lighter this is 2.6 kilograms I wonder how much would uh, some one person tent weigh this is not an expensive one it is quite a cheap um, tent uh, but still not that heavy one person tent would be even um, lighter the weight didn't bother me uh, I was riding on a pretty flat terrain also uh, but the weight of, of your baggage, you feel it when you ride through the cobblestones, through some bumps. On the bumpy terrain, you, would, you feel, oh, I would like to have less weight on my bike. Because you will feel like it, it's, it's buzzing, it's making some noises and you think, oh, will this, will this uh, rack uh, hold for, for, for a whole 500 kilometers? So that's my tip. For me, uh, putting the bike inside was great. I was having everything inside. I loved it. One thing, uh, the floor of this tent is pretty thin, so I think it will be easy, quite easy to, to damage it. Um, so that's just one thing you should know. Otherwise, uh, setting it up is super easy, it takes a couple of minutes. Uh, same with uh, putting it all back here to this um, bag. I loved it. Here's the other mattress I had to choose from and that's the one I didn't choose. So I'm just gonna show you how it looks like. The sleeping bag. Uh, this is the Channel Dark Hippo 400. It says limit 5 degrees Celsius, extreme minus 15, comfort 15. Okay, uh, but what I can tell you, I was sleeping in the temperature of, I think in the night could be down to the zero degree celsius so between zero and, and eight i think it was uh, too warm in this one uh, for me um, yeah i think when it was like when it was like over five degrees uh, celsius it was really hot 
maybe because I was my my body was just warm after uh, riding maybe but usually after a long ride your body needs more energy and and um, tends to to get cold but in this one it was really warm so I would I wouldn't be afraid of sleeping in this sleeping bag uh, in the freezing temperatures below zero uh, degrees Celsius because it is you can also see it is quite bulky it is quite uh, thick good one the top tube bag uh, I did like it it has so many different compartments uh, so in one I would have some some money in other I would have power gels inside uh, there were my uh, power banks uh, it's well thought out the zipper works in the in the right direction so that you could you could uh, just guide the cable USB cable to your phone on the handlebars uh, it's great it's been working very very well uh, I did have to uh, think a little bit how to mount it on my huge top tube or actually this main tube here because it is hugely hydroformed but I did manage it so it was cool I, I, I do like it. it it seems to be a good quality the rose wheel uh, attack this is the one uh, I haven't used. This one is also for the top tube, but on the on the top of the of the top tube. It's great. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about it. Uh, but when I was riding off the saddle, I would hit it with my knees, and I thought this wouldn't be comfortable for me. So I didn't even take it with me. I tested it before I went for the trip. So uh, if if you don't bother with uh, riding off the saddle, you just sit on the saddle. It will be great. Another place like free space on your bike. Uh, for me, I like to stretch my legs. I like to change the position sometimes, not much. Uh, but then I would hit the, uh, this with my knees, so I didn't use it. And finally, my little stove uh, <laughs> I ordered. I was looking forward to have my tea every night. But one thing you should be aware when buying from, from uh, Gearbest, uh, usually if they say they have something um, in the warehouse it's there but it can be different warehouses so this was all this here was one order uh, but it came with three different packages I think two came from Holland and the third one was it from Germany or so but anyway uh, the stove came very late before my before my trip uh, and so I didn't have time to buy the alcohol for it for it because uh, in our stores in my city in my town uh, I've been told that uh, we no longer use alcohol based um, stoves like touring stove I don't know I, I don't know about it but uh, I'm looking forward to use it in the future because this is just so sweet otherwise guys that's it one uh, one additional thing I wanted to tell you about uh, bike packing bike is that the 35 C tires I think would be just optimal uh, I didn't feel I would need something something more these were just uh, comfy enough uh, strong fast on the on the um, tarmac as you can see there is there there's no knobs here these are really slicks with small knobs on the sides which would help uh, sometimes on the on the sand i did i did uh, ride through the sand and gravel so it was just just great i was happy with that great fun i'm gonna make more of that uh, tell me what do you think about this stuff maybe some alternatives for uh, for what i've used and and some questions put those below and see you soon bye bye ah. <sighs> guys thanks for hanging out with me remember to join our forum.sigbiker.com where we discuss all the topics uh, training service any issues with the bikes if you want to share anything with us join our facebook group all the links are below and if you want to join my patrons feel free to do so and now okay you might watch just one or two episodes more but then let's go and ride Achoo!